Hello, my name is Joshua Hayworth. I'm a software developer. I primarily write in C-sharp and dot, on the .NET platform. I've got a problem. See, every time I get an idea, I write it down. So I've been accumulating these massive piles of notebooks. Well, I haven't done anything with them. And I don't plan on doing anything with them. The problem is I have wife, and I now have a new three-month-old daughter, and chances are I'm probably going to be using one or two of them at the most. So why not share them with uh, the internet, and, and they're, well, they will be released uh, under the public domain. So if you feel like you can use them, use them. I will be calling this Joshua's Notebook. So this is my notebook. This is a standard uh, Moleskine uh, graph paper notebook. Uh, I have a couple of organizational tactics that I use with this notebook. So as you can see, I uh, bookmark the first section of the notebook for use for index purposes so that uh, later on in the pages I'll number the pages at the top and then I can reference them in some sort of index in the beginning. Uh, the idea that I'm going to be sharing with you today has, has to do with um, a stock trading idea that I had. Uh, it's related to the MapReduce uh, Google algorithm or platform that they use for distributed computing. So I will give you a basic overview. So I hope you can see this okay. Uh, I'll be doing a couple tests and uh, see if I can get this in uh, in uh, good focus. But this was the basic idea. I've got a uh, queue or a system of uh, of queues where messages come in or requests come in. I've got a master server that maintains a list of all the worker servers. These worker servers maintain a number of worker threads that uh, work is going to be done. The master will hand out work to each one of these worker servers. This would be uh, arranged in, in an isolated cluster. So uh, each of the, the uh, all of these would be on a local LAN or a local, local uh, subnet. As a request comes in, it would be a chain request. So the, requ the, ch the request would come in and it would request a chain. The chain would have a name and the chain would do something. The chain would be arranged in a, a system of links. So each individual chain link would be uh, some sort of action that would be performed. So individual chain links would be zip a file, write a file to disk, read a file from disk, launch a, uh, a trader. Uh, this was used in a stock trader system, so a trader would be an individual object uh, probably stored in the GAC or the Global Assembly Cache on the .NET platform. Uh, process a stock tick. Uh, initialize a buy order. Uh, things like that. Or log an entry to a logging system. Uh, this system would be heavily instrumented. So uh, either the, uh, the event log or some other logging system like Log4Net or something like that. So when the request comes in, the request, the master requests a chain definition that would have a certain time to live. This chain de definition would describe the chain and the chain links in the chain. And e each individual items uh, that would be called. Now, uh, each individual chain link would probably implement an interface. So the request comes into the queue, the master processes the queue, gets the chain definition. The chain definition would probably be in cache and would have a time to live. So if more requests comes into the queue of the same definition, doesn't go have to re go to the database to go get that definition. So then it reads the number of chain links, whether or not they are synchronous or asynchronous, meaning that this chain link needs to wait until this chain link is completed. And hands each individual chain link out to an available work server, depending on load or CPU load or memory availability, that kind of thing and there would be a small database where the master would store each worker state uh, in that state database. So it would hand an individual chain link uh, back out to a worker 
If it was synchronous, it would wait for the worker to uh, reply with the results and get the next link in the chain and hand it to the next worker, the next available worker. Uh, if it was asynchronous, let's say the, the first three steps in this chain were asynchronous, it would handle, handle, hand, hand out chain link one, chain link two, chain link three, the work would be done and the master would be notified that the work was done. After a chain link would, would finish, it would put a request back into the queue and tell, tell them that chain link one, two, or three is done and then the master would read that uh, request and uh, look at the definition and find out what the next step in the chain was. So that's a simple definition for a distributed processing system that I had. Uh, it was primarily uh, inspired by a system that we're using at work. I work for uh, Credit Union Direct Lending, so they process a lot of loan applications and they use BizTalk to do something similar to this. Uh, I hope you like the idea. Enjoy if you can use it. Oh, another quick thing that I forgot, now that I still have the, uh, the camera rolling. Uh, since this was going to be used in a stock system, I wanted to be able to have the idea of a trader. A, an object, a .NET object, that would live in memory as a singleton, or uh, several instances of uh, a type of trader. Because I was going to use genetic algorithms, um, uh, an instance of a trader that would uh, have a certain decision tree in memory. So each worker uh, could have an object instance that it was working on, that it could filter through uh, chain, or, or results of chains through. So uh, each worker might maintain an object instance or it might serialize this object instance to XML to be handled, to hand, be passed into the next uh, queue request.